Welcome back to the study of the book of Daniel. I'm Ann White, and today we're going to be discussing chapter 11 in the book of Daniel. We are closing in on these last few chapters, and we've had such a rich study so far. But we're going to continue to see how God encourages us by telling us not only what he told Daniel for a period of time that was his future events, but also what is to come in our end times. And we're going to be learning more about that. But before we go into the details of today's chapter, let's go to the Lord in prayer and invite him into our study and our time together. Father, thank you for your word. And thank you, Father, that as we always say, it never returns void. You've said that, Father. And no matter what we read, no matter what we study, Lord, there's always something, Father, that you pull out of that timeless life lesson that you want to teach us, Father. So help us to clear our minds from all of the distractions of today and help us to focus on what you would have us to learn in the pages of this incredible prophetic book. God, go with us and guide us. Help us not to get too caught up in the details, but to just discern what you would have us take away. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for your word and for your presence in our life. In Jesus' holy name, we pray these things. Amen. All right, let's dig in. There's so much to cover. There's no way we could cover it in our short amount of time together. But I want to give us a little bit of a recap, and I want to really just spark your interest in this book of Daniel. It's such an incredible, encouraging book. As we've seen, the character of Daniel has stayed steady and true from the time he was a teenager and brought into captivity all the way to this time frame where he's having visions that God is giving him for future events and end time events. Daniel's character, his humility, his love for his people, his heart for his people, and yet his respect for the authority that he is surrounded by has stayed steadfast and true. That's really a lesson for us in today's time, because we're going to be around difficult situations, difficult circumstances, and difficult people. May we have the character of Daniel as we move forward. Let's talk about chapter 11. Chapter 11 is part of Daniel's fourth vision. And we saw in chapter 10 in our last lesson that that was the first part of his vision. And Daniel was disturbed and discouraged about his people. And so God sent a messenger to begin to explain to him the things that were yet to come. Chapter 10 gave us kind of the context, and it talked about the spiritual battle, that there's a battle in heaven going on at the same time that we're battling here on earth, and that God is fighting and his angels are fighting on our behalf against the evil forces that want to take us out, take us down, and take us away from our faith. Chapter 11 gives us the content. The heavenly messengers are coming back. They're explaining what is happening in these visions that Daniel is having. The time frame is the same as chapter 10, what we were studying in our last lesson. It is the third year of King Cyrus, 70 years of captivity for the Jewish people who'd been in Babylon for that amount of time. Now, that was the amount of time that God had allotted for them, and very soon they would be allowed to go back, and many of the Jews would go back to Israel, rebuild Jerusalem. But that's a whole nother story. Daniel's approximately 86 years old at this time, and it's around 536 BC. In verse 2 of chapter 11, we see that there are three more Persian kings that are going to reign and come up through history. Now, this particular chapter records what's going to happen during the time of the 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In other words, God is giving Daniel a preview of the things that now we see are historical fact. First of all, in these first few verses, he's talking about and learning about Medo-Persia, who's actually in rule at the time that Daniel's having this vision. But then in verses 3 and 4, we see that there's a Greek empire that's going to be coming into play. Now, there's a gap between verses 2 and verses 3 of about a 150-year period. What we see and what Daniel is seeing in his vision is a mighty warrior king that's going to come in and rise to power swiftly. 
Now, we've learned about this also in our previous lessons. In chapter 7, we saw that Daniel saw the vision of the four beasts, and those were the four kingdoms. It was Babylon, and then Medo-Persia, and then the Greek Empire, and then the Roman Empire. And then in chapter 8, God's vision to Daniel focused in more on the Medo-Persian rule and the Greek rule. Here again, God is explaining to him about the Medo-Persian rule, and then he jumps 150 years to talk about that this swift, fast king, warrior king, is going to come into power. Today, we know that king to be Alexander the Great, who ruled from 336 B.C. to 323 B.C. In Daniel's vision, we find out that this ruler will rule with great authority, and historians have covered volumes on Alexander. If you want to learn anything about Alexander the Great and how he fits the profile of these prophecies, that's easy to find. He'll accomplish everything he sets out and his height of power, once he gets to this height of power, all of a sudden his rule will end. His sons will be killed. There's no descendant to take the reign. It'll divide into four separate parts. Then what we see is this Greek empire battling amongst itself, this civil war going on. And you see what you read in this particular prophecy, the king of the south battling the king of the north, and they try to form an alliance, all of this battling going on. But what I really want you to take away from our time today is not so much the details, although they're historically applicable. What I want you to take away from our study of these prophetic verses is that God has already laid this out. He knows the future. He's planned the future. He allows the future. There's a purpose in these battles. There's a purpose in this struggle. There is a heavenly realm and it's there's a spiritual war and a battle going on at the same time these battles are going on with mankind mankind has struggled since the fall of mankind and it's going to continue to battle until it comes back to the lord so those of us who are strong in our faith we have to take hope and take encouragement in these verses even though just as daniel was troubled we are also troubled about our current culture In verses 20 through 24, we see that there's a despicable man. Now, at the end of the Greek rule, we find out that that man who ruled between 175 B.C. and 163 B.C. was Antiochus Epiphanes IV. Very detailed in what God says this person is going to be like, what kind of a ruler. And you can go back and study the history books. He was despicable. He stops the sacrifice for the Jews. He attacks the Jews and persecutes them to great deal. He will flatter those who are against the faith of God and violate God's covenant. But the people of God, those who are faithful, will know And they will be strong because they'll know that God still has a plan and he still has a purpose for their future. Verses 40 through 45 talk about the end times. And so there's a little bit of duplicity here, talking about things that are happening between the Old Testament and New Testament, those period that many of us call the, the years of silence of God. And then also some of this also plays into things that will happen when the Antichrist shows up on the scene. Now, Our takeaway, truly, from all of this prophecy we've been studying is that God knows. He's the giver of wisdom and discernment, just like he gave Daniel wisdom, discernment, courage, and the ability to walk through any circumstance in life with great courage and great faith. He knows the futures. He plans the futures. We can trust God with our futures. No matter what we're going through today, tomorrow, or the next day, we know God's got this. And as long as we keep our eyes on him, we're going to be just fine. So that's my challenge for you today. And as we get prepared to study our very last chapter in Daniel, that's going to put a bow around this prophetic vision, this fourth vision of Daniel, I just want to encourage you. Whatever God has on his plate for you today, I want you to just trust him. Whatever you're going through, just give it over to the Lord. Walk in faith and walk in courage and know that it will all be okay in the end. Stay with me because we've got so much more to come. And I look forward to closing and putting a bow around this. This is such an amazing chapter, such an amazing book. And I appreciate you being here with me to study it. God bless you and I'll see you soon. Fear 
Fear is one of the greatest enemies of the abundant life God offers. Embracing the courage to take the next best step toward the life God intended for us begins with a commitment to change, specifically a commitment to renew our mind. And the best way to renew our mind is by reading, hearing, studying, and applying God's Word to our lives. The Courage for Life Study Bible is designed to provide you with practical, easy to understand, and inspiring content that will help you grow in your relationship with God and His Word. The informative introductions, the listen to the word prompts, the courageous men and women of faith articles, and 1,464 Bible lessons provide you with practical guidance to help you pray, observe, interpret, and apply God's Word to your everyday life. My prayer is that by incorporating the Courage for Life Study Bible into your daily routine, you will be inspired to embrace your God-given courage and make adventurous and courageous choices that prepare you to experience the life God intended for you. Remember, with God, all things are truly possible. Order your copy today at courageforlife.org and discover a pathway for discipleship that will transform your relationship with both God and His Word.